Sometimes it's helpful to talk about the mass percent composition of a compound. Um, mass percent is the mass of an element in a compound divided by the mass, I'm sorry, the mass of an, yeah, I said that right. The mass of an element in a compound divided by the mass of the whole compound times 100. Uh, the general formula, where should I put this? I'll just sneak it in down here. The general formula for percent is it's the part that you're interested in divided by the whole thing times 100. Now, when this says 100% here, we're treating percent as a unit. The mass of x and the mass of the compound are going to have the same unit. Those units cancel out. We end up with a unit of percent because we're multiplying by 100%. You do not use a percent button on your calculator, okay? My calculator doesn't have one, um, but I know some people have more business calculators and it has percent. Don't, don't use it. We're just multiplying by 100. We're treating percent as a unit. So if we look at this example here, a 0.358 gram sample of chromium reacts with oxygen to form 0.523 grams of the metal oxide. What's the mass percent of chromium? Mass percent just means we're finding the percent of chromium by mass as opposed to by volume or by number or something like that. So the mass percent of chromium is going to equal the grams of chromium divided by the grams of the whole compound. We don't know what the compound formula is. That's okay, it doesn't matter. We have the whole mass and we're going to multiply by 100%. So we have, here's our mass of chromium, 0 0.358 grams. And it reacts with oxygen and forms 0.523 grams of the compound, the metal oxide. So that's the mass of the whole thing. Why does the metal oxide weigh more than the metal by itself? It reacted with oxygen. So it grabbed some oxygen and is holding on to it. So now you have the mass of the chromium plus the mass of the oxygen in there. So the mass of the chromium divided by the mass of the whole compound times 100. So make sure your calculator is cooperating with you. 0.358 divided by 0.523 times 100. My calculator is, is telling me 68.45124 blah, blah, blah. Did you get a number like that? If you got 0.68, you're using the percent button on your calculator, don't do that. How many significant figures should this have? Three. 0.358 has three sig figs, 0.523 has three sig figs, 100% is exact. So 68.45, so the four is going to get rounded up, 68.5%. Any questions? When you're talking about something real like this, you can't have more than 100%. My, my go-to example for percentages is my, my oldest son's kindergarten class. There were 20 children in it. There were five girls and 15 boys. Doesn't that sound like fun? He had a great year. I'm glad I didn't know beforehand what it was you know, the percentages were going to be. So if I'm going to find the percent of boys, I take the number of boys, 15, and divide by the total number of students, 20, and I end up with 75% after multiplying by 100. Is it possible to have 150% of the students in a class be boys? No, because that's saying that out of 100 people, 150 of them are boys. 
that that's not possible, is it? Right? That's not possible. We can use mass percent composition as a conversion factor also. So we already learned how to use the chemical formula to get a conversion factor. Um, and that's the way a chemist would normally do it. But sometimes you're doing things and you're actually told what the percent composition is, and then it's faster to use that. So if we are told that the percent composition of sodium in sodium chloride is 39%. What that means is that in 100 grams of sodium chloride, 39 grams are sodium. So we can take a percentage like that, 39%. Percent literally means per 100. So 39% is the same as 39 per 100. 39 what? 39 mass units of sodium. Well, our favorite mass unit in chemistry is the gram. So 39, having trouble making a G. Let's try again. 39 grams of sodium per 100 grams of sodium chloride. That's what 39% means, right? 75% means 75 out of 100, whatever we're talking about. So this can be used as a conversion factor between grams of sodium and grams of sodium chloride. It's a relationship. OK, so we already did this a longer way. But here's our original question again. The FDA recommends that adults consume less than 2.4 grams of sodium per day. How many grams of sodium chloride can you consume and still be within the FDA guidelines? Sodium chloride is 39% sodium by mass. So 39% sodium by mass. That means 39 grams of sodium per 100 grams of what it's in, sodium chloride. You could do it with pounds. You could do it with kilograms. As long as the unit you choose to use in the numerator and the denominator are the same, it's going to be OK. So we've got 2.4 grams of sodium. So we're going from grams of sodium to grams of sodium chloride. Because we know the percent composition, we can do it in one step. 2.4 grams of sodium. I want grams of sodium chloride on top, and I want grams of sodium on the bottom. Because I want grams of sodium to cancel out, and grams of sodium chloride is what I'm looking for. From the percentage, I see that 39 grams goes with sodium. So that goes in the denominator, and 100 goes in the numerator. 2.4 times 100 divided by 39. Six point one five three eight blah 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 grams of sodium chloride. How many significant figures should that have? It should have two. So that would round to 6.2 grams. That's not exactly the same as what we came up with earlier, is it? This 39%, where is it? Over here. 39%. Is that an exact number? No. No, it isn't. That would be a measured number or a calculated number that would have some uncertainty in it. This calculation is actually not as accurate as the one we did earlier because we were starting with two significant figures, but then we're using a conversion factor that only has two significant figures. Uh, we could calculate this to more significant figures, and then our number would probably agree exactly. 
Since the difference is only um, one in that last digit, we're not going to get worried about it. Any questions? So we can, we can do, we just did um, grams of sodium to grams of sodium chloride. We can do the other way around as well. If a woman consumes 22 grams of sodium chloride, how much sodium does she consume? And again, sodium chloride is 39% sodium by mass. So here we're given a mass of sodium chloride, and we're trying to find the mass of sodium. This is the opposite. Same process, though. 22 grams of sodium chloride, one arrow, one conversion factor. I want grams of sodium on the top. I want grams of sodium chloride on the bottom. I don't have to think about multiplying or dividing. I'm just trying to get those units to cancel out. They're telling me what to do. Once you get the hang of it, this is so much easier. Now I need this relationship. Well, I got this 39% sodium by mass. Don't guess. Write it out. 39%, that's going to be 39 grams of the part, sodium, per 100 grams of the whole. It would be silly to say that there's 100 grams of sodium in 39 grams of sodium chloride, right? That's like saying there are seven children in a family of four. It's not possible. So this time, the 39 goes on top, and the 100 goes on the bottom. 22 grams times 39 <coughs> divided by 100. <coughs> My calculator is giving me a nice number, 8.58 grams of sodium. How many significant figures? There should be two. So we would round that to 8.6. Any questions? Same dimensional analysis concept. New conversion factors, some different units, but the process is exactly the same. 